Hey guys, it's WaifuGate here today bringing you another YouTube video. This time we're going to be doing another meta deck analysis, but instead of doing like a, you know, what performed well in uh, leagues for MTGO and stuff from uh, Goldfish, I'm pulling the list straight from the Red Bull qualifier that happened this last weekend, I believe. Um, so we're going to be looking at a few of those lists for episode 10 of this um weekly i do i do this video weekly each week i take lists and i analyze them kind of figure out like what's good in the sideboard why is it there why are they including gus main deck etc like the choices for the deck and trying to analyze that and break it down a little um and to like kind of sometimes showcase off decks that are seem a little off meta that are still performing really well on top of that we have mtga uh magic the gathering arena codes to give away during the video there'll be one per video um i try to do that as much as i can when i have the extra codes so somewhere in the video there'll be some red text um and you just jam that into your store for arena and uh boom you're good to go so that's a one-time redemption though it's not for everyone that watches the video unfortunately so if you get the code you can comment down below on what you might get for the code um and that lets us know a uh, if the code's been redeemed and then B, I keep a leaderboard for fun on stream. Uh, just like, you know, this is the best pull, this is the worst pull. So if you want to get on there, uh, let me know what you get. You know, it's just for a little bit of fun. So that being fit said, we're going to dig into the list and start analyzing. So let's dig into episode 10 for the weekly meta-analysis review. Today we're going to be going over the list for the Red Bull Untapped International. Um, and we're just going to go from mono white, like basically how well the decks did uh, from the top down. It's not quite like first, second, third, because there's a lot of repeats on Reclamation, of course, there. So we're just doing our best to kind of have a variety of deck uh, reviews here. So mono white, Tamir, since it did well, and then the next deck that's kind of different would be mono green aggro here. Um, so let's dig into it. Uh, so we've got here, we've got Garrison Cats, Giant Killers. What are Garrison Cats? So just some recursion, basically. Sort of like Hunted Witness, but for one mana. Um, Giant Killer. Uh, just good removal for Questing Beast. Uh, this can also take down Uros, which is pretty imp important. I kind of like that against uh, Tamir Rack and such. That's uh, not terrible. Plus you can just tap down their Uro if uh, you killed one Uro. Or if you develop this early as a one drop, you can just keep the Uro tap down so they never get card advantage from it. Uh, also Hunted Witness, so they do run Garrison, so they run eight copies of Hunted Witness, basically, uh, which is pretty cool. So that's why they call this Mono White Tokens, I take it. Alright, so Selfless Savior can save a uh, Loxodon or save a Hollowed Blade. Actually, Hollowed Blade can just be indestructible anyway. Ooh, this list looks really spicy. If this list gets super popular on Ladder... Um, I might consider Extinction Events even in my uh, Yorian list instead of the Time Wipes for board clears. Um, maybe have three Extinction Events, like two of them main, uh, one side, like I have my Time Wipes set up right now. Um, okay, uh, that series, so, uh, how do you pronounce this? The Solidare, la la, I can't English today. I was already struggling with words before. Uh, already is very popular. Yeah, I haven't ran into it a lot, but I just started ranked up today, so my sample size is pretty low, Scott. So I haven't really experienced it too, too much. So lots of indestructible effects, it looks like. Uh, unbreakable formations, much like old Mono White. So like Extinction Event seems like it would do kind of well, especially since most of it is odd colored, aside from the tokens. And these are all on death effects. So if you can hit an odd colored Extinction Event quite early in the match, it doesn't seem terrible. Aside from Raise the Alarm, maybe um, early game. Cry of Carnarium also might be fine. Um, seems like it would wipe out all the tokens. So Cry might be pretty good. It doesn't stop the Loxodon, or after the Loxodon pumps these guys, it, they get out of range. But if we're able to cast the Cry of Carnarium early, it seems like it would be enough. Uh, Mythic is all Tamir and WW. Yeah. Um, Glorious Anthem as well. Nice. So old school, just drop a bunch of one drops and then go glorious i imagine it might be okay in historic too since you have access to um more creatures as well like vanguard and um you've got access to the new one drop the 2-2 like the kitty cat or it might be a, yeah i think it's a 2-2 for one mana it's legendary the old one from kawagawa i think i think it was like close to that set at least if it wasn't quite kawagawa 
and we've got four Ardent Veils, so max number of Ardent Veils and then Planes, which makes a lot of sense, so they have some staying power post-game, especially since they can pump out two twos, which is more devastating for sure. Azamaru, yeah, yep, Azamaru was reprinted in Jumpstart, so that's in Historic right now. Um, so fight is one, so more indestructibility. Um, destroy target legendary permanent that's an artifact creature or an enchantment. wonder what this is for. It can hit Oath of Kaya, it can hit, um, it can hit like Great Henge, Citadel. Uh, creatures in general, I guess Uro, it could kill Uro. Not a lot of legendary enchantments that I know of. Um... But it does hit Uro, which is kind of big. But I mean, they already have giant killers for Uro, so I don't know if they need that. You know what I mean? That just seems like you're um, uh, peeing into the ocean, so to speak. You're not really going to notice it. You know, you're already doing it. Um, I guess pouring salt into the ocean would be a better example, but maybe not. Uh, decrees make sense for mono red, and uh, this can also exile um, stuff from Jund, like stuff like Corvold that might be a little hard to deal with. Like they have Giant Killer, but once again, it's kind of nice. This is also good for Corvold too, but I'm not sure if Jund is really that popular. Um, mono green, it can hit Questing Beast. This can hit Questing Beast. That's big. That's huge, actually. Uh, on top of Giant Killer, I can see that, especially in the aggro lists. Um, just wish this could hit planeswalkers but it would be pretty busted if you could because you get to swing with this and then threaten to use the effect end of turn which is pretty big um gideon's make sense for control uh more indestructibility as well to make that harder to deal with so lots of like indestructibility and annoyance here for control um especially to mirror rack where like flame sweep comes down kind of early and storm's wrath does as well like storm's wrath is very very big and I think the reason why is because of Gideon. Like, you can deal 4 damage to Gideon on your own turn, which is pretty big. The problem is Gideon goes right up to 4, so it kind of ignores that anyway, which is tough. Um, Grasp might become more of a cyborg card for me, potentially, but I don't know. Just depends. Probably just Extinction Event, honestly, to keep these guys in check or um, something. But looks like a really solid list. Like, the sideboard makes a lot of sense to me. Um, caskets can also hit like stone quills which is pretty big and it's really good against mono green because it deals with Garruk's uh, harbinger as well like lots of good tech against mono green which is the other aggro list what you're going to have to race down and then control is kind of free because you can just smork them down and see if you win or not with your unbreakables and such so pretty nice yep I agree with it for the most part um, don't know if I would make any changes since I don't play a lot of aggro um, the fourth unbreakable here is insane. Like that's four, um, four, five, six indestructibility effects that are almost global. Like this isn't quite global, but it can save you enough. And then on top of that, you have Hollow Blade and Selfless, so you can just save one or two big targets each turn to make damage leak through. And then you're threatening to like create a two, two with the glorious anthems. Like it's just insane, man. It's super good. Super strong. Might actually switch to this and just grind. It's tempting me. Um, especially since I already have most of these cards anyway, I think for the most part aside from like maybe the anthems. Um, so yeah, I agree with it. Seems pretty budget too in paper, at least not in arena, but in paper, it seems very, very cheap. Overall, like how much? Yeah, this is this is definitely the best deck for budget, I would say. Aside from maybe like Just Sky Cycle. If you're looking to actually just spend pennies on a deck, that deck is probably better. But if you're in under $50, this is probably your best. And online, it's super cheap. Look at that. That's crazy, man. That's that's basically free. The grand events with. One of your front riders for Red Bull UK Saturday. Nice, nice. Pretty sweet. All right, uh, Tamir Reclamation. Um, so here we've got two Night Packs main deck. That's pretty spicy, like just to speed up the process and to catch other control decks off guard. Uh, how many can, How many counters? Two, three, four, five. Because I need to study these lists if I want to do better on the ladder so I actually know what's up. 
like I should probably just start keeping tabs on the really popular lists. Like I should just keep this as a bookmark for like a week or two and then replace that bookmark so often for meta lists so I, I know exactly what to expect um, for the most part, or at least study these to get a good idea of it. These guys are insane too, the Elder uh, Argoroths. I don't know if they're better than Questing Beast though as a creature. I guess it is card advantage. It's like a super Crassus, but or not Crassus, but Uro. So if people are already expecting Uro, like it's green, like if I'm bringing in Grasp or an Exile effect for Uro, I'm already considering this, so I don't know if it's good. It feels kind of garbage, honestly, as a sideboard card, but maybe it's better than I think. It's like people already expect your Night Packs and everything else, so I really shouldn't be bringing in Distortion for the most part against Tamir Rack, I don't think. I think it's good against Bant, but not against Rack. All right. Um doesn't die to mono white that's a good point okay that's a good point scott okay so this is more for the the mono white matchup okay and see that still dies to a giant killer though so i don't know seems kind of bad like if you're already playing into another card that they have for six mana or for five mana yeah i don't know still seems a little soft to me um it's better than i think though like you replace disputes and you put those in just to throw throw them off. Scorching Dragonfire makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't like exile natively. It has to exile the creature, or it has to kill the creature, it has to die, and then it gets exiled. So if someone gives it indestructibility, it doesn't exile, so that doesn't play around the indestructibility in regards to that type of stuff. Yeah, you just pressure. Yeah, that makes sense makes sense i just wonder if it's better to like maybe like instead of playing that type of stuff to play like planeswalkers that might do similar stuff like that swarm with tokens potentially like there might be a different way to approach it is my thought potentially like you can also swarm them with like typhoons since they can't blow up typhoons too easily like and that's maybe what the shark typhoons for as well and they already have they have two blast zones as well, so mono white kind of suffers for the, from that a little bit, not completely, but it's it's definitely a factor I think. Nice. Um, so anyway, let's check out the um, the deck and try to figure out what stuff is for. So we've got Uros and night packs for threats, expansion explosions for Wincon as well, and shark typhoons. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's also the consideration, Scott, um, for anyone wondering, like watching the YouTube video, I'm talking with my Twitch chat as well as recording the video. Um, there's a consideration for always looking at what else could change rather than what already works. Otherwise, we don't actually make progress on being able to brew our own lists or think about why this card is good and what the options were weighed against it. Like, there might be something that was close, but they decided to go with Elder Gargaroth instead, and that's been working for a lot of people. But what if there's something that works even better than the Elder? You know what I mean? Like, what if? Like, we can keep going down that rabbit hole and thinking, and even if we don't get there, if we, even if we don't get the best answer this time around, working that skill up allows us to see into the future and be able to pick the elder gargaroth out of the pile next time you know so even if it maybe this is impressive right now it's always important to think about like what else what what else can we do you know what are the other options i mean i can i can see it now especially with like bone crusher giants to like answering their thing and then pressuring with another creature that giant killer could potentially hit etc like i can understand that too um makes sense almost like if we took out spiral and gust we could also just run like curega in this type of a list but you'd lose negates too so i don't know if that's okay negates would have to turn into neutralizes but we could go back to that old like um that old list with uh curega instead of running these cantrips and stuff and brazen could go up to four instead of aether gust but that's like a different meta probably i feel like gust isn't too main deckable if uh if it's just for mono green in the mirror matchup because like you're not hitting uh mono uh mono white with this card so 
if the considerations is for are for um are for mono white this feels out of place too so like maybe that could shift us toward curega potentially i might actually try something like that eventually like curega swarm people with creatures etc and then like have cyborg cards cards that aren't curega that might be a little spicy I, that might work it might throw people off too so you don't get the whole uh the whole surprise factor like hey i'm not fires anymore but it could be fun because a lot of people used to run that deck uh back when croquis and i think danny t and someone else were working on it but seems pretty solid so five six seven counters pseudo counters main deck four expansions three sharks and how many lands 28 seems good i like 29 20 28 that type of a thing as well um so two three four four counters in the sideboard i never really understood commence for a win con like it's kind of decent but by the same token it just gets boned by like narset so i don't know this feels like i've never just understood the power of this card over like other stuff for win cons um like it kind of makes sense but i guess in the mirror matchup it's really good to be able to do this end of turn just to chill and get some cards and then uh get like a five five or a six six but when people are already expecting like shark typhoon tokens end of turn this is like sort of the same deal like it's a little different because it draws you two cards so you go up instead of staying even with the cycle um but it does kind of the same thing, so I don't know. Maybe if you're looking for a Shark Typhoon-esque effect, but you already have maximum number of Shark Typhoons, it's pretty decent. It's just it can't pressure Teferi because Teferi can just bounce the token, you know? But I guess if you pair it with something else like a Night Pack or etc., it's kind of hard to deal with multiple, multiple things. Everything else kind of makes sense, especially after Scott pointed out like this whole pressure with creatures type dealio. Um, this is just making me want to play Curega Reclamation then again, um, with like Bone Crushers and, and Garbage main deck. But we'll see what happens on the stream. I've actually been enjoying Esper quite a bit, so we'll see what happens. I'm probably gonna have an Esper build guide up pretty soon on Monday. Yeah, it makes sense. A lot of the choices here the only thing that stands out to me is the gust main deck over something else that might be a little more versatile against mono white um even like a negate for their unbreakable formation when you go to flame sweep or something else also we're not running like any sweepers in this list it's all spot removal and then i have bigger creatures than you do like i'm just gonna swarm you men and bounce the stuff i can't deal with <laughs> so makes a lot of sense i guess it's a different way to approach it and i like that New stuff is, is always nice. Although this might not be new, this might be um, an old list that I just haven't seen a lot of because I've been playing a lot of historic. I'm kind of out of date on standard, which is why I do these things to kind of refresh my uh, my memory bank on what's good, what's bad, and such. This is really expensive, dude. Breeding pools are uh, are a little little bit of money there. Bit, bit, of, bit of money there. 10 bucks a pop for Shark Typhoons. And if I wanted to update my EDH list, it would be kind of expensive. Oof. I don't even want to think about it. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, what else? Pretty much it. I think I covered this deck okay-ish. Uh, mono green. These guys are a pain in the neck, man. These guys are so crazy. Uh, pelt collectors. So pelt collector into bark hide is the classic, or stone coil into bark hide. Uh, two Harpooners. These have actually been killing my uh, Yorians here and there. It's been kind of annoying. Like, I can just block with Yorian next turn against the Questing Beast, and they're like, nope. <laughs> they just touch down pass and kill me anyway. Pretty tough. Ooze is also really rough against Graveyard Strats like ECD and Eerie. This is one of the main reasons why I stopped running Eerie Ultimatum for the most part. Like, this guy just eats the whole deck, like the whole uh, Graveyard Synergy that I like. Two gem raisers. I like gem raiser at three, but you can only have so much room. And four primal mites for removal. Makes a lot of sense. This can also be like a win con. Like this can punch through really, really hard. And two two Nissas is actually pretty interesting too, because this turns your um your lands into creatures. And it ramps you so you can like do 
really obnoxious stuff like eat all of the graveyards ever with ooze and just one shot your opponent um play multiple creatures with uh great henge like it just keeps gas going which is crazy like especially if you castle garen brig i wonder why 22 like 24 lands total and not like three or four garen brigs because i've seen a lot of lists go with with max copies of this just for uh big stone coils and such but maybe there's some reasoning some math behind that i'd like to like to talk with the deck builder about that because that stands out the most to me i think um i mean it must just it must just be that they don't want to see like two castle garenbergs in their opening hand um even though the chances are kind of low with that um and then like not be able to play their one drop out or their two drop on curve yeah, it makes sense nissa plus primal might is often just fireball yeah oh yeah, yeah i can see that yep that makes sense especially on something like a like a stone coil with like trample or something like it'd be pretty crazy um i can see that a lot like blow out the last blocker swing through gg crazy especially with like questing beast or something too like you just have death touch so this could even be like for plus one fight and then boom your creature's gone now it can't block and my questing beast is going to go face after like drawing with great henge into it or something like and just doing primal might for like two <laughs> be pretty insane uh ranger's guile target creature gets uh you control gets plus one plus one and hex proof until end of turn i think we had this back when uh like steel leaf champions were in stuff we had something very similar to this i'm not sure if it was directly ranger's guile and it was a direct reprint i know this is a reprint but i'm not sure if it's the same reprint that i'm thinking of it might be uh, more interaction with the board makes sense uh grazer so they're opting into ranger's guile instead of the one that gives all creatures hexproof which is two mana instead for everything hexproof and indestructibility for all blossoming defense okay so it was a very close card not quite ranger's guile is very close though. I remember blossoming now, the name of it. Um this costs two less to cast. Oh, this must be for the uh the mirror matchup, dude. This is definitely for the mirror and maybe Bant, like Bant Joriel or something, maybe. And then two elders for those long matchups. So they have something else that you have to answer. Um just like questing be something that'll just end the game if you don't control it. Well that makes sense. So I would I'd be curious the uh the cross benefit analysis of the the hexproof indestructibility it's like heroic intervention i think I'm trying to think of it uh the two mana versus the one i think one is just cheaper so you can play like a two or a three drop earlier or protect your questing beast from the board wipe if they don't have a um they don't have a to ferry out already yeah great in the mirror yeah i can see that too it's very hard to deal with that's why you bring in the okahames as well <laughs> so you can like block this guy <laughs> Yeah, heroic intervention. Yeah, like heroic versus this, but I think I think the bottom line is that this is just cheaper, and they're trying to get a quicker game in instead of needing to hold more mana back for the board wipe. Although preventing the whole board from being wiped out seems good against control, but if you can get this off early game against the Teferi, like they go to drop, they they go to drop like the Teferi on your pelt collector or like on your harpooner or something. And then you just Ranger's Guile it so you can kill the Teferi next turn and you prevent the card draw. Like, makes a lot of sense. And how's it going, Carva? How are you doing, man? We're recording a YouTube video right now. But, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I like the Nissa Primal Might combo here. Well, it seems really, really good. It went 7-1 in the Red Bull. I think this got 8th place. Ninth. it was very close. There's probably tiebreakers between these two. So, we reviewed 1st, 2nd, uh, and ninth place here. And I'll have the links below, uh, exportable lists for these uh, decks as well, so you guys don't have to worry about that. So hopefully you guys kind of uh, learned a bit, maybe kind of opened your eyes to what's good in the meta now, if you hadn't gotten a chance to check out the Red Bull Qualifier quite yet. So hopefully that helps. And um, I do this meta analysis usually um, once a week. Usually it releases on Friday and they're recorded on Thursday. Um, so I also do viewer lists too. I review those for free. Um, there's no like cost you don't have to be followed or anything on youtube or on uh, twitch or anything just drop by my twitch uh usually on thursdays around 6 p.m cst central standard time that's when i typically record these and if you just want to drop by the stream in general i usually stream from 2 p.m cst until about 8 p.m cst 
Um, you can check out the link below. It's pretty easy to find. And there'll be an end panel here showing you some other videos if you want to check out some more content. Uh, and there's a little subscribe button that really helps the channel out as well. So hopefully uh, I'll see you guys again soon. And thanks for checking out the content.